Patient questions. Do I have to have surgery for rotator cuff tears? This is something we hear a lot, especially for older patients, as they find out that they have small to medium to even larger tears after an MRI. And we go back to this study, exercise rehabilitation and non-operative management of rotator cuff tears, review of the literature where they combined a whole bunch of studies, took the information and gave us some advice on what we should do with some patients. And really what they found were older patients, especially older than 65 years who had both mild, moderate and full thickness tears did really well when they just went with conservative therapy, especially when conservative therapy combined the factors we're gonna talk about most 73 to 80%, which is a really high amount, did well without needing surgery. It also went on another section of the paper to talk about surgery didn't always take in these older shoulders because the tissue just isn't what it once was and very commonly fail. However, those patients did do well post rehab on that failed surgery because they got these factors in line of what we're going to talk about. And Many of the reasons this happens is we get this upper cross syndrome, these tight traps pulling our e shoulders up by our ears and rounding forward. That position of tightness on the upper trap tightens up the chest, SCM, so neck muscles, and it shuts off that lower trap, serratus anterior, which are big scapular stabilizers. When that happens, we're no longer helping our shoulder do what it needs to do. There ends up being too much wobble shearing, which leads to stress and strain on the tendons causing those tears. If we can undo that process by loosening up the traps, getting the shoulder blades to come down and back and re-strengthening those lower stabilizer muscles, people do really well and their shoulder pain disappears. So addressing those functional deficits led to improvement of people with both mild, moderate, and severe tears of their rotator cuff without surgery. The end goal of all this is to increase pain-free range of motion then we start getting some flexibility and strength. We're able to get a little bit more endurance until finally we can really work on the joint stability and functional goals. Stretching could be everything from using a stick to using a door frame. We're gonna find lots of ways to stretch out all the tight muscles that are affecting that shoulder. We wanna rebuild those systems through specific exercises that are activating much more of the lower uh, trapezius and lower scapular stabilizers instead of that dominant upper trap. We're going to use soft tissue therapies to break up those knots and scar tissue that develop in not just that upper trap, but all the rotator cuff muscles and all the muscles that are attached into the spine and scapula. You know, scar tissue just happens with wear and tear. Some people refer, refer to it more as fascial adhesions, but basically the muscle tendons and ligaments got injured at some point in time and they didn't quite heal right. So we need to find ways to kick that healing back up, re-aggravate the area and trigger the healing cells to come in tear up the bad tissue and put down good tissue. You know, better tissue is going to improve our range of motion, flexibility, strength, endurance, and aid to that joint stability. All these factors are improving that upper cross syndrome. As we improve upper cross, we put less stress and strain on the rotator cuff muscles and people once again are going to do better. As we improve that next level is finding ways to add that stabilization into the shoulder and scapular muscles. There's a lot of creative ways we can do it with exercise balls, weights, using traditional exercise balls where you're sitting on and going through motions of movement. So we're gonna challenge the core muscles that work with the scapula to work with the arm. The exercises that we start as a very basic YTWL, well, we can make them harder by putting them on an unstable surface. Instead of two feet wide apart, start going two feet closer together or on a single leg. The better we can make the core work with the pelvis and scapula, the more effective and efficient our system is going to be, and once again, less strain out in those tendons of the shoulder. So for more information, more treatment options, please download or get our shoulder pain treatment guide on Amazon or pick up a copy in the office. We have tons of information on the website for shoulder injuries. Please like and follow us, and I hope this information helps you get rid of your shoulder pain.